We start by casting on stitches for the eye cord itself. I like the look of a narrow eye cord, so I'm going to cast on three stitches, but if you want to make your eye cord wider, it could be four or five stitches. As to the way to get those stitches on your needles, it could be any method that makes a fairly rigid edge. So I use the slingshot version of a long tail cast on, but it could be a knit on cast on, a cable cast on, or any similar method. Turn your work. And this is the only time we're going to turn the work because uh, as we cast on stitches, we're going to look at the right side of the eye cord at all times. Take an empty needle in your right hand and make a yarn over. So we simply bring the yarn to the front of the right needle and over the needle and making a regular yarn over. But as we do it for the first time, it could be a bit confusing. So to make things simpler, simply place the needle, the right needle, under the yarn and make sure the yarn goes over the needle and then the yarn over will be created without no extra effort on your part. And then bring the yarn to the front of the work and purl the stitches of the eye cord. Just regular purls, one by one we purl the stitches of the eye cord. The last step of the process is to bring the yarn to the back of the work and slip the stitches of the eye cord from the right needle to the left needle and we do it purlwise without twisting the stitches. And now we do the same thing. As you see, we still have the stitches of the eye cord on the left needle and we have a newly minted stitch right here on the right needle and we need to put more stitches over here so we repeat these steps again and again. So we make a yarn over, then bring the yarn to the front of the work and purl the stitches of the eye cord. Once we are done, we bring the yarn to the back of the work and slip the stitches of the eye cord from the right needle to the left needle. If you prefer to hold yarn in your right hand, then the, the process is exactly the same. You bring the yarn to the front, over the needle and to the front again, making the yarn over, and then we purl each stitch of the eye cord one by one, just like this. Once the stitches of the eye cord are purled, we bring the yarn to the back and slip the stitches of the eye cord from the right needle to the left needle. Very easy, very easy. And we keep going until we have the number of stitches that we need less one stitch sitting on the right needle and the stitches of the eye cord also on the right needle. So we don't slip the stitches of the eye cord from the right needle to the left needle. Once we get the number of stitches that we need, that would be number of stitches for the projects less one stitch on the right needle. So we keep doing the same thing. Yarn over, purling the stitches of the eye cord and returning them back to the left needle. See now, after I slip the stitches of the eye cord to the left needle, I have six stitches over here. For example, if I want to make a, a swatch that has eight stitches in there, I'm going to make the last stitch, making a yarn over, then I'm going to purl the stitches of the eye cord and stop. So I have all stitches on my right needle. The left needle is empty. I'm going to put it aside. And here's what we've got. We've got three stitches of the eye cord right here on the right needle. And then I have seven stitches that were formed by yarn overs. And if I want to make a swatch on eight stitches, that means it's time for me to stop. So seven stitches over here plus the stitches of the eye cord all sitting on one needle. So the uh, cast on basically is finished because we're not going to add any more stitches to this number of stitches, but we have to deal with the stitches of the eye cord and we deal with them very easily. We turn the work and purl them together. So if it is a three stitch eye cord, that, um, that means that we need to purl three together. But if your eye cord is wider, you will have to struggle <laughs> through purling uh, four or five stitches together. And then we bring the yarn to the back of the work and slip the resulting stitch from the right needle to the left needle, like this. 
So now we have the number of stitches that we need for the project. So in my case, it's eight stitches. Now we are ready to work the first row of the project and this is the wrong side row and this row is very important because we want to turn these yarn overs into twisted stitches and that's why this row will be different depending on the stitch pattern of your project. If you want to add this edge to a project worked in goddess stitch then we would knit all stitches in the first row through the back loop to twist those yarn overs, right? And that includes this first stitch that was formed by purling the stitches of the eye cord together. So we treat it just like a regular stitch. And we insert the tip of the right needle into the stitch from right to left and knit through the back loop just like the rest of the stitches in this row. If you plan to add this edging to a project worked in a different stitch pattern, not a goddess stitch, and you don't want to add a, an additional ridge on the right side of the project, then we would need to purl all stitches through the back loop in this first row. So we bring the yarn to the front of the work and then insert the tip of the right needle from left to right under the back leg of the first stitch on the left needle like this and then wrap the needle as we do for purling and pull the wrap through purling the stitch through the back loop and we do it again and again this the yarn is at the front we go under the back leg see from left to right we go like this then purl the stitch and slip it off the left needle so that's what happens when we want to add this edging to a project worked in stockinette stitch or any other stitch pattern and you don't want to add this additional ridge to the right side of the project. This ridge actually looks very nice, it kind of highlights the, the edge so it's totally up to you whether to knit stitches through the back loop in this row or to purl them through the back loop. But no matter which way you're going to take the stitches that we form in this row will be twisted, nice twisted stitches that not only uh, are denser and not kind of loopy or open, they also prop the eye cord, making it more vivid. And this type of edging looks very nice with any stitch pattern. It's like a subtle decoration that many projects need. And it looks especially nice and projects worked in goddess stitch because the texture of this of the edge is consistent with the texture of goddess stitch. This edging is reversible, it looks the same on both sides of the work. It has a moderate stretch, very nice texture, so it's not going to flare out even after you wash your project many times. And as you see, it is identical to the edge formed by the a pearled eye cord bind off method. I even had to add a pin so I remember where the cast on is, um, edge is because otherwise it would be very hard to tell the difference. Those edges are identical. If you like to treat your projects with matching cast on and bind off edges then go to tenroseday.com slash matching dash cast ons dash bind offs. Happy knitting my friend. I'll talk to you in the next tutorial.